Greater MSP Business is brought to you by PwC, U.S. There's a new option for discarding those coffee grounds, eggshells, and pork chop bones. It's something called a blue bag, blue bag recycling. Organic Solutions in Ramsey is one of the first companies to offer this method of recycling or organic materials, which account for almost half of most of our household trash. Organic Solutions makes and distributes the blue bags, which are especially designed to hold organic waste. The bags that are collected as part of regular curbside recycling pickup. What could be easier if you want to do organic recycling? Jim Wolschlager is CEO of Organic Solution. Thanks for joining us this well, morning, you. Jim. You, know, you are part of Randy Sanitation. How did the, how did Organic Solution come to be as yeah. a separate company? Um, well, Randy and Sandy started Randy Sanitation back in 1979 with one truck, and we've grown to be the largest independent waste hauler in Minnesota. So we had a strong base to, to start from. Uh, we began an organics program, curbside program in the city of Wyzetta 10 years ago. And in doing that, we put separate carts at every house and then ran a separate truck around to collect it. As we moved this on to 11 different communities within the Western Metro, we realized that there had to be a better way to do it and that you were able to take that extra truck off the street because where a trash truck might go through and pick up 800 houses, there may only be 200 houses that have a, would have an organics cart mm -hmm. out. So we developed a blue bag to be a co-collection bag where the customer, just as you said, put their, puts their organic waste in the blue bag, ties it closed, and on collection day just puts it in their trash cart with the regular trash. And then when it gets to our MRF, the first thing we do is pull those blue bags out and they go off to the compost site to be composted. You, I mentioned that figure about how much organic waste there is in our regular household waste. So obviously, if we are going to increase our recycling goals, that's where you're going to be looking. Yeah, and, and last year's legislature increased the recycling goal from 50% to 70%. If you look at the last PCA waste store, you'll find that 35% of what is in the trash, remaining in the trash, is organic waste and another 25 to 30 percent is soiled paper products that could also be composted. Mm -hmm. So when you combine those two, it's a significant number. It's 60 percent of what's left in the waste stream that could be composted. So tell us about the blue bags. You, you make them, although you didn't, you had to buy them at first, right? Yeah, we, we started back, as I said, four or five years ago and, and brought in a consulting team to first of all find out if there was a BPI certified compostable bag and BPI certification says that that bag will will disintegrate completely in a professional compost And BPI facility. is an acronym for uh, something, I, pollution something? Yeah, yeah okay. it's Products Institute. It's, I, okay, uh, okay, got I, it. I should know that, but I... Biodegradable, I, perhaps? My head. Maybe, maybe <laughs> okay. that's it. But there is a slight difference between biodegradable and compostable. Compostable yeah. standards require that it be to disintegrate completely. Um, and we hired a gentleman, Craig Coker, from Coker Consulting, to find try and find us this, this co-collected bag and he came back and said, you know what, Jim, it doesn't exist. You guys would be, if you want to do it, I'll help you develop it, and you, it'll be something that you guys can do first. So a blue bag is a patent-pending process of co-collecting one method with another, you know, one collection uh, disposal and with another. So we're collecting BPI uh, organics with trash. Mm -hmm. yep. Obviously a special bag, not just an yeah. average ca it's, uh, garbage bag. As far as compostable bags go, there's a wide range of what these bags are. And this bag is an extreme duty bag. If you took this bag and tried to rip it, you wouldn't be able to rip it. Hmm. So this bag is designed to be to go into a collection truck all day long and at the end of the day be able to pull it out and send it off to be composted. Um, what goes in, what, 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 what are the contents that go in then? Anything that was once alive can be reprocessed and composted. So you have all of your food waste, you have your dryer lint, you have soiled paper products, coffee grounds and filters as we talked about earlier. Anything that is was made from something that's not a petroleum based product or isn't a plastic, a metal or, a, or aluminum can go in there. How do you think the public is taking to this concept? You know, it, it, when we, it, it's fun because when we bring it to a new community, you'll get about f anywhere from 5 to 10 percent sign up for it immediately. There are people that are very conscious of the fact that, that we need to increase our recycling rate and they want to be part of that. In their home, they can actually make a difference. So that's exciting. But for the rest of the people, they have to step back and begin to embrace the fact that, you know, as I had mentioned earlier, organics has been reclassified as a recyclable. It holds the same standard as a 
water bottle or a pop can. In fact, you said that the, the legislature took a took an action regarding the tax on on, or, on organics. Yes, organics always was a non-taxable portion of the solid waste stream, so it was a non-taxable, but it was looked at as municipal solid waste. They reclassified it in 2010 as a recyclable. So now what you're finding is more and more communities, especially with the re increased recycling goal, are making this part of their mainstream recycling program. Okay. So if you look at Wyzetta or you look at Medina, for example, uh, the organics is included as part of your service. So all you have to do is call and just opt into the program. The bags are sent directly to you. That's the interesting thing about Blue Bag. Because they're not a retail-based bag, the bags go directly to the consumer. Mm -hmm. The next year, you get sent another 60 bags, so you have bags for the next year. And you can do this what, basically once a week? Yeah, basically once a week with your trash. But if you, there's 60 bags that are designed to be for the year, so you have extras for a party or for a holiday weekend or whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. And at some point, if you needed more bags, you just call Randy's if, if Randy's is your hauler. Right. Now, uh, Blue Bag, the distribution rights to Blue Bag is, have been sold to SET in Minnesota. Uh, it just makes it easier for other haulers don't feel as though they're dealing with Randy's. They go through SET as the distributor mm -hmm. and um, in fact Randy's buys our bags from, from SET. So are you seeing an uptick? We definitely are seeing an uptick. Uh, 10 to 15% 10 to of what comes in on a trash truck out of a community that has Blue Bag is separated instantly in pre-sort. So when you look at before that material goes off the landfill, 10 to 15 percent of it being diverted, that goes a long ways. When you add that to the 46 percent we're at right now for recycling, add 10 to 15 percent and you are a lot closer to the 70 percent we need to get to. All right. Well, next we're going to be talking about what you do with all of this yeah. stuff when it comes in, but we want to thank you right now, Jim, well, thank you. from Organic Solutions for joining right. us this morning. So, okay, recycled organics, they have a lot of uses. Next, we'll tell you about a company in Rosemount that uses them to offer sustainable landscaping.